recall a time when my oldest boy, who is now about to be 20 next month, when we first was about to have him. We went to the store and we bought a crib. And the instructions came inside of the crib, but me, and, but me just like most men in here, being who they are, decide to forego the instructions. I began to pull all the pieces that I laid them out strategically on the floor. And I looked at this piece and that piece, and I began to try and put it together by the picture. But to my surprise, uh, it sounds like some of y'all been there too. To my surprise, the crib didn't quite come out to be like a crib was supposed to do. So then uh, I had enough sense in my mind to go back and look and get the directions and follow the instructions. And once I followed the instructions, not a little bit, but when I followed the instructions all the way down to a T, that's when uh, the crib came together and it was able to hold my baby boy. Here it is we find in our story a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman is a bad man. Naaman had power. Naaman had wealth. Naaman had all kind of prestigious eloquence. He was a bad man. Naaman had just went to uh, uh, Syria and he has whooped the Israelites. Are y'all with me? He goes and when he whoops them, he comes back and he says, let's take us some spoil. You know how when they went to a war, they would come back with spoil. But this time they came back with spoil, but they came with some captives. They came with some slaves. They brought back with them some slaves. It's amazing how God will use the thing that you took to help you. Naaman comes back with this little girl. This little girl is now uh, the, he the handmaiden to Naaman's wife. Are y'all going to pray with me? And Naaman is out going about his daily business, doing what he is supposed to do. And the little girl is tending to her business, handling her daily chores and daily duty. And the Bible says that she just has a word for the wife. Look at this. This girl is in captive. She is a slave unto Naaman. But she's still trying to help her slave master. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all missed it. Here it is. This girl is in captive. She's in bondage. She ain't free to go where she want to go. But yet and still, this says a lot about Naaman. This says that Naaman had to have been a guy who was halfway decent. Because the Bible says that she begins to speak a word unto her mistress, unto Naaman's wife. She begins to tell Naaman, hey, um, I wish that my master was back with the prophet Eliza, back in our homeland. Because if he was there, he could be healed. The Bible says that Naaman's wife began to tell all of these things that the girl had said unto Naaman. Naaman gets excited. Naaman gets ecstatic. He gets all happy because, hey, it's a chance for me to be healed. The Bible says that then uh, Naaman goes to his master. When he goes to his master, his master sends a letter over to the king of Israel. Y'all with me? And when he sends the letter, the king of Israel gets the letter. And when he gets the letter, he begins to get upset. Why? I'm glad you asked. You got to understand, this man had just left from over here because he took everything we had. He just whooped everybody in the house. He beat up everybody and took a lot of our stuff with him. And now this man is coming back again to probably do the same thing. So he begins to get upset. He's enraged. He tears his clothes. And 
it gets back to Eliza. Eliza says, wait a minute. Somebody go and tell him that he don't have to worry. Just let Naaman come on. Naaman comes on over. And when Naaman gets there, Naaman has got uh, gold and silver, all of these fine, fine, fancy clothes. He has all of this stuff waiting for Elijah. He said, I'm going to give him something for healing me. The Bible says that, let's see, you know, he gets there and he waiting for Elijah. He knocks on the door. Can't you imagine him standing there waiting for Elijah? He's waiting for him to come out and say something to him. He's waiting for Elijah to come out and wave his hand, lay his hands on him, speak a word unto the Lord. And all of a sudden, his withered hand begins to clear up. He's waiting on the man of God to come out and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. Y'all missing it. He's waiting on the man of God to come out and have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. But to his surprise, he knocks on the door. It ain't Pastor Love that comes out. It's Dwayne McLean that comes out. And Max says to him, go wash in the Jordan seven times and be healed. Naaman gets mad and says he had the litigated goal to send Mac Lane out here to meet me. I didn't come to see Mac Lane. I came to see Pastor Love. Uh, 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 oftentimes, we miss the message because we don't like the messenger. Oftentimes, if it ain't our favorite person that gets up, we begin to shut our ear and have a deaf ear and not even hear or receive what the Lord has to say unto us. May not be your favorite personality for the day, but God has the word for you by, who, by any means necessary. The Bible, the Bible says that now my first point and my only point is it ain't like he pictured. It ain't like he pictured, but well, I put it up there in the right word. It's not like he's pictured. It ain't like he pictured. Because Naaman is waiting for Eliza to come out. He's waiting for him to come out, lay his hands on him, speak a word, and be healed. He said, I didn't come here for all of this. I didn't come here to talk to Mac Lane to Starlin. I didn't come here to talk to Sister Shonda. I didn't come here to talk to Rodney. I didn't come here to talk to everybody. I came to see Eliza. The Bible says now Eliza is enraged. He's mad. He's hot as fish grease. He's bubbling because of the simple fact that he didn't see who he wanted. So now he's going to go, pout. I didn't get what I wanted, so now I'm going back home. So in other words, he'd rather go back the same way he was than to receive the message from the messenger that God had for him. So here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Elijah didn't come out. Naaman mad. Naaman begins to walk off. Can't you seem like a little old five-year-old? I didn't get what I wanted. Mama didn't give me no ice cream. I wanted some ice cream, but she gave me a sandwich. I didn't want no ice cream. Here it is. Naaman walks off. He's mad. He's upset. He's enraged. Thank God Naaman took some folk with him that had some sense. Can I drop this in parenthetically? 
You need to make sure you got somebody with you when you act a fool. <laughs> when you go out and get drunk, have somebody with you that can drive you home. When you go out here and do the wrong thing, have somebody with you that can get you back home. Because when you acting a fool, baby, you need somebody with some sense. Naaman is about to forego his whole blessing because of stupidity. Have anybody ever been there? Anybody ever been stupid? Let me, okay, I've been very stupid in my life. And I had to somebody say, fool, act like you got some sense. Here it is, here it is, here it is, Naaman. Naaman, man, he's upset. He's contrite. His heart is all jacked up. His servant comes to him and says, hey, dog, hey, look here, player. You finna go back home jacked up with leprosy, still all jacked up. You see them white spots on your arm? Do you want to go back home with them? Keep acting like you acting. Keep acting a monkey if you want to. He says, hey, hey, listen, it don't matter who come out the house. All that matters is did you receive the word? <laughs> Naaman, Naaman has to have a talk with himself. He has to come to himself. He like the boy in the hog pen. Yeah, you want your mama and daddy's money. You want to go and do the food. But when the money's all gone, when the wine is gone, when the women is gone, when that ain't going to please you no more. Here it is. He finally says, the servant says, ma'am, we got to go back across the Jordan anyway. We came across it. Look at that, though. Ain't it funny how the place he has to go back to, the place he came across, but nothing happened until he got to the man of God's house? Uh -oh. The place he came across, he can go back across it, but if he does not do the instructions, there'll be no healing to take place. Okay. You can come to church on purpose all day long. Come in the place. Come back through the place and go out. But it'll never get any kind of healing taking place in your life until you decide to follow the instructions. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Hope I ain't boring you. Hope I ain't boring you. Here it is now. Naaman has some sense. He has a come to Jesus meeting with his own self. He said, let me get my behind together so I can get in this water. He goes to the water. He said, but why I can't get in the Abana and the Fafa? Why I can't get in them rivers? Them rivers are so much cleaner. Everything is oh, it's just beautiful. Huh. I'm trying to move on, but a lot of us want to go and get the blessing, but we don't want to go through the nasty stuff. You don't want to go through the thing, the very thing that you need to go through to get to the other side. Okay. You're going through hard times, trouble, and trials. Stick right there. Follow the instruction that God gives you. Stay there and don't move until God releases you. I'm going to say it one more time. You're going through hell and high water. Stay right there. Don't move until God releases you. Come here, Elijah. Elijah went down to the brook. The Bible said, feed him there, raven. The Bible says, raven, feed him there. Don't feed him over there, but feed him right there. If Elijah wouldn't have went to the brook, he wouldn't have never got the food from the mouth of a dirty bird. Uh-oh, did you hear? I said a dirty bird. The dirty thing that you don't want to fool with. The dirty person that you scared to say, come on, that could be the one holding your million dollars. <laughs> this ain't no prosperity message, but I'm just trying to tell you, if you live right, do what God wants you to do, he'll bless you. Yeah. Okay, I'm a little witness because I ain't worked since December. I got a big rig, big rig and it's still no getting paid. I got a big rig. The note is still getting paid. They gave me COVID relief. Thank you, Lord. 
but now the note is still getting paid. The Lord had a ram. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. Naaman finally goes down to the river. He gets to the Jordan River. But can't you see Naaman? He's sitting here. He, he pouting. I got to go down here in this nasty water. I really don't want to get in this water, but uh, I don't, uh, well, I tell you, man, every time I look around, it's always this here, but I got to get in this nasty Come on, man. Lord, why you can not send me something else? Talk to yourself. Say, well, Joe, you got to say, but get your butt in that water. <laughs> do whatever you got to do. But get your behind in the water. Let that water hit you in them nasty spots. Here it is. Naaman. 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 Naaman gets in the water. I'm almost through. You know, Baptist, I'm, I'm old Baptist boy, so we say that about three, four times, so y'all don't pay it no mind. Here it is. He gets, I'm almost through. <laughs> I'm almost through. He gets in the water, goes down in the water. The Bible says he goes down one time. He goes down one time. I don't know if it happened on the first time or the last time. But all I know is he had to complete the whole instructions. He goes down the second time. Still no change. You ain't completed. You did it once or twice. I'm talking to you. You did it once or twice. And Nothing happened. Are you giving up? You applied for the loan. Once or twice. Are you, have you given up on God? I thought, my, I, when I read my Bible, I thought it said, there's nothing impossible to him that what? I said it again, to what? He goes down a third time. He says, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. I know I ought to be filled right now. So he looks up. Wait a minute, that didn't work. Sometimes God wants you to stay in that thing. Just sit there and saturate. It hurts. Excuse me, y'all, but it hurts like hell. You're hurting. You're crying in the midnight hour. Do y'all know how many times I had to cry because it seemed like my truck, one thing, I got a brand new truck. Y'all remember the story? One thing after another. Then all of a sudden now the truck is messed up. Need an in-frame overhaul on a truck I just got. And it hurt. I mean, I go in my room, don't want the kids to see me cry. My wife comes in and says, baby, you better have your ride or die. She comes and she says, baby, it's going to be all right. Keep your head up. You are good. You need somebody to tell you you're a good man. Even though you may have done a whole lot of hell in your life, you need somebody to tell you you're a good man. So here it is, Naaman goes down for the fourth time. He dips in the water. Still, no change. And, and, and he goes down one more time. For the fifth time, still, that's what I'm talking about, no change. And he goes down. For the sixth time, and if I use my ecclesiastical imagination, 
I can see Naaman getting discouraged about the sixth time. The Bible says that Paul and Silas prayed about the sixth to the ninth hour. And uh, about midnight, that's when uh, a shaking uh, and a rumbling uh, begin to take place in the jail. So the sixth time is still nothing. And here it is, the seventh time. He dips down in the water. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that uh, here he is now, looks at his feet. He looks at his hands. The Bible said that his hand uh, is now just like a newborn baby's skin. The Bible says uh, that he looks at his feet and it's just like a, a newborn the baby's skin. Why am I telling you this? Because if you follow the instructions to a T, I guarantee you that everything that you need will work out. But you got to learn how to stay in a thing even though it don't feel good. You got to learn how to stay in that thing. It may hurt. It may not feel good. But tell your neighbor it's for your good. Learn how. Learn how to follow the instructions. Because I've learned in my life, every time I tried to do it in my own strength, things just didn't quite work out until I turned it over, 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 until I turned it over to the Lord. He worked that thing out. Naaman, Naaman is now healed. But can I tell y'all the reasons why Naaman couldn't go and I'm through. Naaman couldn't wash in the abound and the far, far. The reason why, it all makes sense. It don't make sense at first. But it's a reason. God does everything for a reason. It's something down the road he's trying to keep you from getting yourself entangled in. First of all, Eliza can come out and touch a leper. Second of all, the reason why he could not go to the Abana and the Farfa, because those rivers flow to Damascus. And everything that washed off of Naaman would have washed down into the Damascus springs, into the wells, into the systems. Everything that supplied that whole town would have been jacked up all because of Naaman being hard-headed. But the reason why he said the Jordan, and I'm through, is because the Jordan flows down to a place that's called the Dead Sea. The Jordan flows to a place called the Dead Sea. It's also called the Salt Sea. The salt levels in the Dead Sea are so high, nothing can live. Nothing can sustain life in the Jordan, in the Dead Sea. So the reason why he had it to flow down to the Dead Sea, it was something on Naaman that had to come off and had to go down to a place where it could not come back again. It's the reason why God is telling you, follow the instructions. It don't feel good. I know it don't. It hurts. You want a place it feels like God is grinding you on the grinding wheel. You want a place it feels like every time you get to a point, he smashes you back down on the potter's wheel. He has to rebuild you up because he's trying to kill some stuff. He's trying to kill some stuff off of your life. He's trying to make it so that when it goes out this time, it will not come back. Maybe there's somebody today that God is trying to 
get something off of them. He, he got you in a place. Seems like you're in a topsy turvy. Seems like you're in a catch 22. Seems like you, every time you lose, you can't win. But God is asking you is there something that you're trying to get off? Maybe you need to follow the instructions. Don't, don't get halfway free. Then turn around. <coughs> go back to the thing that had you bound. God, maybe God is trying to <coughs> get out of here, devil. Maybe God is trying to get you to a better place. Maybe God is trying to get you into a place that he has established over here. But it's something right here that you will not adhere to because you don't like how it looks or how it feels. Maybe you have an issue that you're wrestling with. And God says, if you would just make one step, make one step, I'll make two. I have a appeal for you this morning. If you're sinking in a sinking place, something, it's like it has you bound. You tried and you tried. Maybe it's time to stop trying to do it by yourself and look around this room and see all of your brothers and sisters that's in here with you that may need you to touch and agree with them and cause that thing to come off your life. I dare you to just stand up and just start making one step. Naaman said, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it for the vine. He says, I ain't going to do it. But finally, Naaman, something clicks inside of Naaman. Hello, Naaman. Hello, Naaman. Hello, Naaman. Let me talk with you. Hello, Naaman. Naaman, come down the altar. Come down to the altar. Today is a good day to adhere to the instructions. Don't be stubborn. Because stubborn it makes it a whole lot harder. When you be stubborn, don't even worry about what nobody thinks. But come down to the altar. Glory to God. Second appeal. Maybe you don't know the Lord as the true deliverer or the saver of your life. Today will be a good day to come down and recommit, get your life right. Today will be a good day. Glory to God.